Chapter 15 Point Blank Bracing his left hand against the wall and gripping the chain with his right, Scapegrace heaved. The pipe was begging to give. He could feel it. He could hear it. Every other pipe in the place would have broken by now. He should know he'd had them installed. Just his luck that the skeleton would shackle him to the only secure pipe in the building. He gritted his teeth. His face was red from exertion and he really needed to start breathing again sometime soon. And then the pipe broke and Scapegrace went flying backwards, his whoop of triumph cut short when he hit his head on the floor. He lay there for a moment, free at last and trying not to cry, and then he got up, the shackle dangling from his wrist. There was nothing he could do about the shackles around his ankles, so he quickly shuffled to the door. Making sure the skeleton and the girl weren't anywhere close, he stepped out. His steps were ridiculously short, and he probably looked like some sort of demented penguin as he made his way away from the pub. He'd find someone to help him, someone who could get these shackles off. After all, the entire population of Rawhaven couldn't want him dead, surely. He came around a corner, near the Rawhaven sanctuary, and froze. For a moment he was too stunned to even smile. But then the smile appeared, and it brightened his day. The torment was pointing a gun at Pleasant and Kane. Chuckling, Scapegrace shuffled over. The skeleton's skull was as blank as ever, but the girl was looking at the torment like she couldn't believe what he had just said. Nobody paid any attention to Scapegrace. You can't be serious, said Kane. Scapegrace loved the way the torment ignored her and spoke only to the skeleton. Kill the child, he was saying. Shoot her if you want, set fire to her, strangle her, I do not care. If Scapegrace had been able, he would have done a dance there and then. I'm not going to kill Valkyrie, Pleasant said. Dead man. What is one life compared to billions? Face as one's return, billions will die. You know this. That may be so, but I'm not killing her. Those are my terms. There must be something else, Skullduggery said. Something reasonable I can do. I'll make this easy for you. The torment tossed the skeleton's revolver back to him. The skeleton caught it and pointed it right between the torment's eyes. Scapegrace lost his grin. Things had suddenly taken a turn for the worse. No one dies here, Pleasant said, except maybe you. Where is the grotesquerie? I am the torment, dead man. Do you really think I fear death? For another few seconds, the gun didn't waver, but then Pleasant lowered his arm. Scapegrace could breathe again, and the torment nodded with satisfaction. You need my help, he said. You have my terms. Kill the child. You can't just... Time is running out. Listen to me, this is insane. She's done nothing. Tick, the torment said. The skeleton looked at the girl and Scapegrace saw the doubt in her eyes. She pointed at the torment. Beat him up. Beat him up or, or something. Shoot his foot. The skeleton shook his head. Threats won't work. Empty threats won't work, but if you actually shoot his foot... Valkyrie, no. I've met people like him before. Everyone has a breaking point, but we don't have time. Pleasant turned back to the torment. How do I know you have the information I need? Because I'm telling you I do, the torment answered. And you don't have the luxury to doubt me. By now, Varen Vengers will have retrieved Lord Vile's armour. The time you have left is like sand clasped in a fist. It's sifting through your fingers, dead man. Will you kill the child? He will not, Kane said defiantly. Tell him, Skullduggery. Scapegrace's heart almost burst with joy when Pleasant remained silent. Kane stared at the skeleton and took one step away. Don't tell me you're actually considering this. Do you have your phone? What? You need to call your parents. You have to say goodbye. A moment passed and Kane turned to run, but Pleasant was too fast. He grabbed her wrist and twisted and she fell to her knees in pain. Be brave, the skeleton said. Let go of me! 
Kane shouted. Pleasant looked at the torment. Give us a minute. A minute, the torment said. Nothing more. Scapegrace watched as the skeleton pulled Kane to her feet, his hand still gripping her arm, and led her away. The words he spoke were quiet, and the girl shook her head and tried to pull away again. They got to the corner of the Raw Haven Sanctuary, and finally the girl started nodding. She took out her phone. This is brilliant, Scapegrace said to the torment. The torment turned his head to him and frowned. Who are you? Um. Sorry? It's me. It's Vorian. Vorian Scapegrace. I built the cellar for you. Oh, the torment said. You. Why are you back? I thought you were dead. It would have been nice if you were dead. Although he had never known the torment to make a joke, Scapegrace decided he was making a joke now, so he laughed. This is brilliant, he said again. Making him kill Cain? I mean, it's just brilliant. It's genius. I'd never thought of something like this. I know. Do you mind me asking, where do you get your ideas? Do they come to you in a dream or is it just, you know, instinct? I'm keeping a, like a journal where I jot down all my ideas and my thoughts and... The torment looked at him again and Scapegrace shut up. You irritate me, the torment said. Sorry. The torment went back to ignoring him. Dead man, he said loudly. Your minute is up. Pleasant put his hands on Kane's shoulders. He spoke to her and went to hug her. She twisted and broke away, shoved him back. For a moment she was obscured from view, but when Pleasant moved again, Scapegrace could see the tears in her eyes. Pleasant took her arm and they walked back. You will kill her, the torment asked. Pleasant sagged. Yes. Scapegrace looked at Kane. She was standing silently as straight as she could, trying to be fearless despite the tears. Then by all means, the torment said, kill her. Pleasant hesitated, then took his gun from his jacket. I'm sorry, Valkyrie, Pleasant said softly. Don't talk to me, Kane said. Just do what you have to do. That looks like protective clothing, the torment commented. Be sure to shoot into her flesh. You wouldn't want me to think you cheated after all. Kane parted her tunic and Scapegrace smiled. He wished this entire thing was being recorded so he could play it back in the future again and again. The moment when Skullduggery Pleasant killed Valkyrie Kane. Please forgive me, Pleasant said, then aimed the gun at the girl and pulled the trigger. The gunshot hurt Scapegrace's ears. Kane's body jerked and her eyes widened. She stepped back, then fell awkwardly to her knees, clutching the wound. Blood trickled from her fingers. Valkyrie Kane fell forward, her face hitting the ground. Pleasant looked down at her. She was an innocent girl, he whispered. She had ancient blood in her veins, the torment responded. And so was a fitting payment for the information you require. The grotesquerie is hidden in castle ruins on the hill in Bancrook. Detective, can you hear me? Pleasant raised his head slowly. I wonder if you can get there before Vengeance, the torment continued. What do you think? If you're lying, Pleasant began. Why would I lie? I asked you to kill the child and you did. I keep my bargains. Pleasant stood over Valkyrie Kane's dead body. After a moment, he hunkered down and picked it up. Scapegrace, he said. Back to the car. Scapegrace laughed. What, do you think I'm nuts? I'm staying here. No, I'm taking you back. Scapegrace grinned and looked over at the torment. Why are you looking at me? The torment asked. Scapegrace's smile faded. What? There was nothing in our bargain concerning you. But I can't go back, Scapegrace cried. He'll put me in jail. You seem to think I care. Scapegrace, Pleasant said in a voice devoid of any human emotion. Get back to the car. Start walking. 
Scapegrace looked around desperately, but there was no one to help him. Trying not to cry, he shuffled off. I wish to thank you, detective, the torment said. I look around at this world, what it's become. I look around at my fellow sorcerers as they huddle in shadows, and I realise now that I have been waiting. Do you see? I have been waiting for a reason to live again, to emerge from my dank and squalid cellar. I have a reason now. I have a purpose now. For years I have slumbered, but now I am awake. You have awoken me, detective, and we shall meet again. Count on it, Pleasant responded. The torment smiled, then turned his back and walked away. Scapegrace was betrayed, let down, abandoned. Pleasant walked beside him, carrying the dead girl in his arms. Scapegrace doubted he would survive the journey back to the sanctuary. He had heard tales of the skeleton detective's fury, and there was no one else around for him to take it out on. Scapegrace couldn't reason with him. He couldn't bargain with him. There was no hope. No hope left. They got to the car, and Pleasant laid the girl's body carefully in the boot, then looked back at the town. The torment was gone from sight, and the town looked empty now as night fell. Well, we did it. Pleasant said, sounding relieved. Scapegrace frowned, but didn't say anything. This has been a good day so far, all things considered, Pleasant continued. I have the location of the grotesquery, and I got to kill Valkyrie, which admittedly is something I've been wanting to do since I met her. She can be incredibly annoying. Had you noticed that? Uh, she hardly ever shut up. I pretended to be friends with her, but honestly, I just felt sorry for the poor girl. Not the brightest, you know? You're such a goon, said a voice from behind, and Scapegrace whirled around and squealed as Valkyrie Kane walked up, hands in her pockets and a smile on her face. 